All right, I'm live. Sorry I didn't see you last yes last night, but uh, I was busy doing some car repairs and didn't get those done until a little bit too late to get set up. And by then, I didn't really feel like doing much of anything anyway. I don't have a garage, so I had to do all my stuff outside. And it didn't get above zero yesterday or today or tomorrow. It's not going to start warming up. It's supposed to get back up in the 20s by about Tuesday or Wednesday. But uh, it's going to be around zero for the next few days. The lows ain't going to be terribly bad. I mean, it'll get down to about 10 below, but it's not going to be super bitter, super bitterly cold. But the problem is it's snowing right now. We're supposed to get six to eight inches of light, fluffy snow. And once that's done, the wind is going to pick up to, you know, probably 40 miles an hour for the next couple of days and blow it all over the place with a little bit more snow coming behind it. So it's going to be a bit hairy if you have to go anywhere, which I don't, which is nice. Because the last big snow we got, which uh, the picture that I used for a thumbnail for this video is a view out my bathroom. That was Tuesday and Wednesday or Wednesday and Thursday, I forget. I was working both nights and the first night we got Probably about, it started off with rain, turned over to sleety, snowy, slushy stuff, got about six inches of that. And then the next day we got a foot and about a foot of uh, heavy wet snow on top of it. And I got to drive home from work in the worst of both storms. So there we go. My power was out for about 36 hours. The, uh, that heavy, wet, sticky snow clung to all the tree branches and knocked down tons of limbs and power lines. And uh, they had it back on a couple of times for about an hour at a time during that period. But as soon as they get the lights on, as soon as they turned around, another branch would break and knock down another power line. And didn't really get everything on to where it stayed on for a good 36 hours or so. But I got wood heat, so it wasn't too big of a deal. And it wasn't really all that cold. I mean, it was 25, 30, so you don't really need a lot of heat to uh, keep it warm. But yeah, if you're in northern Wisconsin, Minnesota, Michigan, if you don't have to go anywhere the next couple of days, you're probably better off not. Or even if you do have to go somewhere, you're probably better off not. Because the wind chills will be bad. I mean, it'll be about zero with a 40 mile an hour wind. You're looking at around a 40, 45 below wind chill. So if you're outside, it's going to be a little bit nippy. I got a week's worth of wood sitting in the living room, so I'm not, not too worried about it. Let me see who all we got here. Elizabeth Mendioa, Cynthia Wesley, Dan, good to see you. Pat Needham. Oh, you just got a notification. Well, at least you got one. You know, I mean, YouTube, they've never bothered to fix the notification system. You know, I mean, either you'll get a notification or they'll tell you a half hour after something starts. Oh, yeah, by the way, he's starting in an hour. Uh, Cynthia Wesley, I saw you. Debbie, Billy Lee, good to see you. Get moving here. Got to look these over here. Fish Ed Salad, good to see him too. Well, that was an early one. It must have been my first. Put the notification up. But yeah, it's going to be a bit chilly, but that's not really that unusual for winter around here. The uh, weatherman seems to have gotten a lot more nervous in the last few years. They kind of like scared people, making things sound, you know, deadly, deadly cold, but. I mean, it's not, I mean, this is northern Wisconsin. It's not that unusual. We have had a lot of easy winters the last few years, but uh, it still gets bad. R.T. Scott, good to see you. Janet Batista, Jose Torres, good to see you. Let's see here. Chris Salverson, good to see you. Redbird Farm and everybody. But anyway... I haven't really found a whole lot of stuff in my wanderings about. I did find one thing I've been kind of looking for. Not exactly what I had in mind, 
but it's pretty close. I've had this Griswold Dutch oven lid for years and years. It was, it was my wife's. She had it for years and years. Got it from her aunt, I think. And that's a uh, slant logo, number 10, Griswold Dutch oven lid. Like I said, pretty much always had this. But I've always been looking for a bottom for it. And I finally found one. It's not quite right. It's a uh, block logo number 10 but it's hard to find any number 10 griswolds and i paid 35 bucks for it needs a little cleaning up but it's pretty good shape otherwise and i finally got a bottom for my big dutch oven lid maybe someday i'll find an actual slant logo bottom for a reasonable price but uh you don't see them very often and when you do most of the time they got a lid with it and they go for insane prices especially if you got a trivet in it. And uh, the other thing I found isn't cast iron, but I found a set of innards for a nine cup Pyrex coffee pot. It was sitting there all by its lonesome on the shelf. Let's see if we can do that without blowing out the whiteness on it for 99 cents, which is a hell of a deal because if you ever tried to find even just a stem on eBay, those stems usually go for anywhere from 20 to 40 bucks a piece just for that. So I was tickled to death to find that. Hopefully I won't break it setting it down. But yeah, you don't uh, you don't see them very often. That's why I ended up with so many extra pots because a lot of times you'd find a pot that had a stem or the wrong stem or some of the internal parts and some missing. And uh You'd see them now and then for, you know, five, ten bucks because they didn't have all the parts to them. So, uh, you know, I'd buy them and eventually end up with enough extra pieces and parts, but end up with a great surplus of pots. And, yeah, it's the first time I've ever seen just the innards on their own like that. And for a buck, yeah, I was definitely going to take that with me. I also uh, got to clean it up a little bit better. This is what I had my aunt wanted a chicken fryer so i'm gonna give her this here little wagner ware chicken fryer i got a little dusty from sitting just wipe her down and wash it off good got a lid for it that's a birmingham stove and range lid probably after the 1940s or so see birmingham stove and range lids they had dots on them little indented dimples instead of the spikes like on a lodge or rings like a, a Griswold or a Wagner and uh, the early ones from the 20s and 30s the pattern of the dots was just random I mean there were just a bunch of little random dimples after early 40s mid 40s they started putting them into a regular pattern nice circles and lines so this is somewhere after that this is I showed you this in a uh, in an earlier stream, I got it for 11 bucks, a Dutch oven that was just hideously nasty rusted. And that's the lid from it, and that cleaned up pretty good. And it fits that Wagner almost perfect. Not quite exactly super perfect, but certainly good enough. But I uh, kind of doubt she's watching, but I'll get a hold of her pretty soon and arrange to get that to her. I've been looking for a top for your old aluminum coffee pot for years and still no luck. Yeah, and a lot of them, you would have the uh, lid, but they had a little glass kind of bubble thing in them where it would percolate. And a lot of times those are missing and you can almost never find them. Or at least not the right one. I mean, if you find them, it's always the wrong one for your coffee pot. It's supposed to be 50 here and... Friday in Northern Vermont. Yeah, I believe it. You know, you're kind of getting on the warm, warm side of the big system that's pushing through and freezing everybody up. I uh, sent you away from a MeWe group about cast iron. Fellow Minnesotan here. Well, I'm in Wisconsin, but you ain't that far away. 
yeah, weather weather alerts are a good way to sell milk and bread. Yeah, they are. Yeah, I mean they uh, they've gotten a lot more hysterical. It seems like over the years. Yeah, I usually do find things when you're not looking for them either. But anyhow, yeah, I got some time to myself here. Finally getting a little progress on some of the household projects around here. And uh, I'm going to have some time off coming up. I'll be, I'll be working this weekend and over Christmas. And I'll have some more time off after that. But I finally starting to make progress on getting my bedroom cleaned out and the living room all cleaned out. I had taken the dressers out of the bedroom, boxed up everything that was in them and some other stuff, and had that shoved in the living room and some other stuff that I boxed up in the living room. And uh, turned around and had to shove all that back into the bedroom to make room out in the living room for the dressers until I could get them out of here. Well, I finally got those out of here, brought down a big mahogany dresser that I had upstairs. Had to do a little work on that and get the, uh, had to do some repairs on a couple of the drawers, get those squared away. Got that moved into the, into the bedroom finally, starting to put stuff in it. And now I can start unpacking all the boxes and sorting out the stuff that I need and stuff that I don't need. A lot of clothes I don't need anymore. I usually buy clothes secondhand because they never last me. You know, all the years working as a laborer, it wouldn't pay to buy new pants, new jeans, anything like that, because sure as you would, you'd end up snagging them on something and putting a big three corner tear in them, have to patch them and repair them. So you're better off just to get, a pair of five, six dollar pants at Goodwill, wear them until they're ragged and then throw them out and get another pair. And uh, I got quite a few pairs I probably should have thrown out by now, but I'll have to sort through as I start putting things away. Hopefully I'll finally be able to get that cleared out in the next day or so. And I wanted to get, uh, spend a little time make a video or two. I wanted to, uh, Get the video made on cleaning up and reconditioning that meat grinder and maybe make a little sausage too while i'm at it if i get out i'll see if i can find some uh casings maybe make some bratwurst or something like that a uh, local grocery store that usually has sausage spices sausage casings things like that uh they don't have any right now but i know of another place that usually does so i'll see what they got and uh Maybe within the next week or so, get a get a uh, meat grinder rehabilitation and sausage making video put up. That'd be kind of cool. I need to do more looking. Hopefully, after the first of the year, some of the flea markets and garage sales. Oh, you get a snow day tomorrow. Yeah, it's supposed to, it's supposed to get pretty nasty with the wind driving all that snow around. I need to find the ring for your waffle maker. They're out there, you know, but uh, they're kind of tough to find. You know, they're not real common, but you can find them now and then. You know, and sometimes you can find uh, a base and uh, a base and one side of a waffle maker or one that's broken, something like that, and uh, kind of piece it together that way. Been lucky, uh, most of your cast iron with lids are original to, original to the piece. Yeah, some things kind of stayed together, you know, like, uh, you know, Dutch ovens, a lot of times they'll, uh, you know, they'll keep the lid and the uh, Dutch oven together. But like skillet lids that had the ears on them, especially ones that are marked that say right on them, skillet cover. You know, those seem to have uh, gotten separated a lot more. 
and uh, same with chicken fryer lids. They seem to have gotten separated quite a bit more. You know, they'll wear the Dutch oven. They kind of stayed together more often. You still find a lot of Dutch ovens without a lid because it got used on something else. But uh, I did some research on the fajita pan. My grandfather said from the Sizzler restaurant, whatever that is before my time. Sizzler, yeah, they were a, they were a steakhouse. I think they were a buffet, maybe even. You know, but they're kind of a steakhouse chain restaurant type of thing. And uh, I know Wagner made an oval pan they called a sizzle server. And uh, that's what they were used a lot for was for serving steaks on a, on a uh, hot cast iron platter. Uh, any new finds? Yeah, I just showed you that. I found a uh, number 10 Dutch up. Got something popping up on me here. Let me kill this quick. There we go. Yeah, number 10 block logo Griswold Dutch oven to go with my uh, number 10 lid that I've had for ages and ages. Uh, what's my face, favorite dish that I make in a cast iron skillet? Well, I make most everything in a cast iron skillet, really, so kind of hard to say. Well, the dog, he's sleeping over there. Uh, poor Corey is frozen solid. How do you reseason a lid? Mine has a little rust on it. Uh, pretty much the same way you would season a skillet. You know, you clean it up like you normally would, strip it down, de-rust it, and all of that. And uh, you give it a few coats of seasoning at high temperature like you usually would. But I found that after you give it a couple of base coats of whatever you're using at a fairly high temperature, give it two or three coats of oil or whatever you're using at a lot lower temperature, about 300, because lids tend to rust because you get a lot of, you know, I mean, you get the condensation dripping back off of them and they tend to rust easy until you've really used them quite a bit. And uh, a couple of coats of seasoning at a lower temperature seems to help provide that or prevent that quite a bit. You know, it doesn't, uh, it stays a little bit more oily. You know, it's not really oily wet, like you just wipe it down with oil or anything. But as long as it isn't really fully pol polymerized, it seems to be a little more water repellent and it seems to uh, season, them, season them up better. Uh, that Griswold you just gave away, did it originally have a glass lid? I don't think so. You know, I mean, it's possible that it did, but I think it was... Uh, would have been just a uh, a cast lid on that one. Uh, can you year guess your Wagner straight letter scotch bowl for you, please? Uh, the straight logo was fairly early. I mean, it was from 1892 up until 1912 or so, 1910, 1912 in there. And uh, there is some overlap with the uh, the Arc Straight logo, but yeah, it'd definitely be before 1915. Yeah, after that was pretty much all the uh, the Arc logos. So more than likely, you know, 1890 up until or 1892 rather. That's when Wagner started, up until about 1910. Uh, Merry Christmas to you too, Jill. I got to work Christmas. I got to work a double shift, in fact, on Christmas Day because I'll be covering for somebody else. But that's okay because you end up making a good bit of money doing that sort of thing. And I didn't have a whole lot planned for that anyway.
Anyhow. Oh, yeah, it's a noodle. Don't think I said hi to it's a noodle. It's good to see him, though. But, yeah, that uh, that uh, Dutch oven I gave away, pretty sure that was a cast iron lid on that. It was, it tends to be, uh, you know, I think I was from the 20s and 30s, and most of the glass lid ones you saw were from the late 40s into the 50s. Uh, if it don't make money, then it don't make sense. You betcha. Going to be 50 below wind chill. Yeah, pretty much. You know, once the uh, wind starts picking up. It's been pretty much calm since that last snowstorm we had, which it would have been nice to gotten at least a little bit of a breeze to knock some of the snow off of the trees because I took that picture today looking out back, and you can see most of the snow that we got stuck to the trees is still on them. And it's going to be, you know, once it starts whipping around, it's probably going to take the power out in quite a few places. Hopefully not here. You know, I'd like to think we got the most likely to break ones weeded out already. But we could still end up getting some trees and branches knocked down. Uh, seen anything interesting on the Goodwill site? Yeah, I mean, maybe next week I'll go over that. I found, found a few. I was going to do one on on a modern iron, you know, like Finex and the, uh, the newer brands that are out there found some, but not a whole lot. So it kind of goes in streaks every now and then you'll see, you'll see a bunch of them for a while and there won't be any, but this time of year, I noticed that on pretty much all of the, uh, auction sites, anything that says Griswold on it, it's usually going to go, going to go for 20 to 30% more than it normally does. Because everybody's looking for Christmas presents, so you're going to buy themselves something nice. And, uh, you know, especially some of the harder to find items, they really go up. But the prices will settle down in another couple of weeks, you know, by the middle of January. They usually get back to where prices normally, more normally are. Uh, good to know about the lids. You're restripping that, yeah, rusted on its first use after six coats seasoning. Yeah, I mean, because you're getting hot steam and it's going to be there for a while, you know, so it's really going to really going to be, uh, you know, they're kind of tough to keep them from rusting the first few times when you use them. And uh, another thing that works good is, you know, cover uh, something frying like hamburgers or something like that or if you're going to brown up hamburger for chili or spaghetti sauce or whatever use your lid for that so get some of the grease splattered on it and uh because then you're usually not on it for a real long time you don't get a whole lot of moisture and when you take it off the pan just lay it face up like that so the it doesn't trap the hot air and moisture underneath it but the pan the lid is good and warm just lay it on your counter upside down and give it a little wipe with paper towel to uh, get some of the water out of it, but try and leave the grease on. And uh, that'll help to, uh, that'll help to uh, season them up better and uh, make them a little more rust proof. Four hours of slow braising beef killed your lid. Yeah, that's uh, it's probably the one thing you really don't want to do with a lid that's been freshly reseasoned as uh you know braising beef for four hours something like that but you live and you learn and yeah the uh you know give it a couple of coats of seasoning at a lot lower temperature around 300 or so and let it bake on good and that that really does seem to help quite a bit and use it for like i say use it you know for covering something when it's frying so it gets splattered with grease and take it off and flip it upside down on the counter and let it dry out faster give it a little light wipe and you'll be doing good that uh, found a pyrex glass skillet with a cast iron inside came with a matching all glass matching skillet never seen that before probably never use it but look it was cool yeah i've got uh i've got some their Pyrex, 
like frying pans, they have a detachable handle on them. I don't know if I ever showed you guys that. And they're pretty neat, but yeah, I haven't seen anything with a cast iron inside. Sounds pretty cool. I definitely would have grabbed that. Uh, I've been trying to season a BSR skillet, but have a hard time. I think it was the timing on the oven. Didn't get done good the first time. Yeah, sometimes, you know, the iron just doesn't want to season. I mean, it can be tough. Usually with time and patience, you know, give it a few more coats and start using it. And eventually they'll season up and take over. But even, uh, even sometimes, I mean, and you can have a hard time with getting them to season for some reason. It's just the way the iron picks up and holds on to the seasoning. I have a glass lid that'll do until I get my other one back up and running. Yeah, and a lot of times if you're going to do something real slow in the oven, especially if it's acidic, you know, like if you're braising in a wine sauce or uh, making sour broughton or something like that that's going to cook for a long time and it's acidic, you're better off using an enameled iron pan. You know, that... Uh, that definitely helps. I mean, I make sour broughton now and then, and that's basically a pickled pot roast. And that's real acidic. And for something like that, you would definitely want to have an enameled pan. But in the meantime, you know, glass lid will do, glass lid will do you good. And, uh, you know, keep trying with that, with your other one. Yeah, like I say, use it for a skillet cover, you know, when you're, you know, browning up hamburger for something else, things like that. And, uh, That'll definitely help to uh, get it seasoned good so it can survive a long, slow trip in the oven a lot better. Uh, this is all one piece and they're see-through. Huh. Yeah, it sounds pretty neat. Um, maybe I'll dig them out for next week and show you them. They you know, look like kind of like a pie plate almost, but they got a little tab on it. And there's a removable handle that locks onto that tab. And there's different depths of them, different sizes. I think I got the whole set. And, uh, you know, they're kind of neat. They're nice for making uh, sauces and things like that. I haven't, really used them, haven't tried using them to fry things in, but I suppose you could, too. But yeah, glass lids, you know, they work just just fine. You usually can find them pretty cheap. You know, they won't have necessarily have a name on them. You know, there are branded Wagner and Griswold lids out there. But, uh, you know, good Pyrex lids work good. And you can find them cheap in secondhand stores. It's kind of hit or miss how well they're going to fit. You know, so you want to definitely measure them. But even if you get one that doesn't quite fit, you're usually only out a dollar or two anyway. So it's not a huge huge problem <laughs> learning pyrex next week it's a lesson i desperately need yeah i got a lot of pyrex stuff too i mean most of my cookware is pretty much all either cast iron or glass you know i got uh you know pyrex double boilers those are handy because you can use the bottom for saucepans and you know of course coffee pots you got a couple little teapots and uh you know pyrex is pretty nice stuff you know a lot of people uh you know the colored pyrex the mixing bowls they're usually like white on the inside and they've got different colors on the outside different patterns and uh i don't know a whole lot about those but i know that some of them are really collectible a lot of people you know, there's some patterns that are scarce and in high demand, you know, and some get pretty expensive. Let's see. I've uh, seen a Wagnerware Griswold Dutch oven spider with tight top large logo. Uh, by spider, you mean a Dutch oven with feet on it? You know, I mean, because... 
you know, that would be a mismatched one because Wagner Ware and Griswold, there is some stuff out there, Dutch ovens you seem to find most common, where it has Wagner Ware and Griswold logos on it. And that was made after the two companies merged and they shut down Griswold. And uh, in the 60s, they made quite a bit of stuff that was had both brand names on it. Like I say, you know, you see Dutch ovens most often, it seems. But there's other stuff out there that has both uh, both logos on it. Yeah, has all that. So, yeah, the... Uh, yeah, I don't know if they've... I don't think they kept using the tight top phrase after they quit making the... Uh, you know, quit making Griswold... And I don't think so. Uh, you know, it's probably an older lid on a uh, little bit newer Dutch oven. Uh, if it's not get glass or cast iron, it's probably full of chemicals. Yeah, it could be. I mean, there's a uh, you know, Teflon turned out to be not quite not quite as good for you as they said it was. Uh, it's easy to go down the Pyrex rabbit hole. Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, they made tons and tons and tons of different things. So, uh, you know, you could definitely get lost in the Pyrex if you get too far into it. You know, most of the stuff I got is, you know, clear stoveware type of things rather than, like, say, the mixing bowls and the, you know, the divided serving dishes and all that sort of stuff. Okay, yeah, I'll have a look at my email here and check it out. Uh, not the lid, just the Dutch oven. Okay, well, in fact, I'll go do that quick here and have a look, see. Over here, to do, sign in. Kind of like there. Right here, let me find the copy the item number. There we go. Paste that in, and it should come up. No, it didn't. Maybe I don't need the little number sign. Get rid of that. And there it is. Okay, vintage Griswold Wagner Dutch oven with handle. Look through the pictures here quick. There's probably should. let me come over here and I'll share the screen. And uh I want to bring that down. Yeah. Get back to StreamYard. Uh let's see, come on, where's my share screen thing here? That how they got to share that share screen. There we go. Wow. Okay, there it is. Oh, Corey, twenty dollar super chat. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas. And it's always greatly appreciated. I can buy more cast iron stuff, or at the very least, at the very least, whiskey. Uh, let's see here. Now, uh, let me get back here. Anyway, all right. Kind of 
not the biggest down here on my little screen. But yeah, this is uh what happened was in the early in the uh, early 1950s, Wagnerware and Griswold both got bought out by big conglomerate holding companies. And later on, in the mid kind of mid 50s, the two holding companies merged. So he ended up with one company that owned both the Wagner and Griswold names. 1957, they decided to shut down the uh, Griswold plant. So that was when the uh, last Griswold stuff was made in uh, Erie, Pennsylvania. But they did keep on with, I'll full screen that a little bit so you can see it better. They did keep on with the Griswold name for a while, but they used mostly Wagnerware patterns. So this is basically a Wagnerware Dutch oven, but they put the uh, Griswold logo and the Wagnerware logo on it. I think, does that say tight top Dutch oven on the bottom? Can't really see it on my smaller screen here. But they kept on with the uh, Griswold name pretty much through the 60s. And then they uh, came out in the early 70s with the stuff they called Griswold Hearthstone. I don't have any of it. I don't really know a lot about it. But they kind of drug on for a few more years after that. But the vast majority of the stuff that's Griswold made in the 60s, if it says uh, Griswold and says made in USA on it, that was made at the Wagner factory in Sydney, Ohio. And they used uh, Wagner patterns. So it's basically Wagner wear stuff with a Griswold logo on it. There are a few exceptions where they used old Griswold patterns. They must have hung on to a few of them at least. That, uh, remember the $7,000 skillet that I showed you? It went for an insanely high price. And uh, apparently the buyer backed out of it, realized that was, you know, seven times more than it's worth. I think it was like a uh, number 14 uh, Griswold skillet. Those usually go for around 1000 1200 and that's what it did sell for the second time around. But that was actually a Griswold pattern, but it was made by Wagner because it didn't have the, uh, it didn't have the Wagner where the uh, Griswold catalog number on it anymore. And it didn't have Erie PA on it. And there are some Griswold made ones that, you know, they have the regular Erie PA and the Griswold numbers on them. And they go for about the same price. But yeah, this is a, uh, you know, dual logo, they call this, or Wagwald. And, uh, you know, that look, yeah, that does look like a, uh, a Wagner style of Dutch oven. So let me get that off of the screen and get my cursor back up on my other monitor. There we go. And, yeah, that's a, uh, that's a Wagner made product. Most of them aren't too bad. You know, I mean, they go for, uh, they go for, uh, you know, decent prices. They don't sell for huge prices. They don't sell for as much as just a Wagner or a Griswold would make. And uh, the quality started to slide, you know, in the early 60s with the stuff that Wagnerware was making. And by the time General Houseware Corporation, GHC, Took them over. The uh, quality really nosedived after that. Uh, Anchor Hawking Fire King cookware. Yeah, I've seen some of that. And I think I got one or two Fire King things around here. Yeah, that's pretty good stuff, too. I uh, just got a two-quart Wagner cast iron pots. When they bought them, they came with Pyrex lids. Yeah, uh, like I said, you know, in the 50s especially... There was a lot of stuff that came with uh, glass lids, you know, Wagnerware, uh, Birmingham Stove and Range, Griswold. They pretty much all did. For seasoning, Crisco or lard. Uh, I usually just say use whatever oil you normally cook with. You know, I use clarified butter. For most things and uh 
I use Easy Beasy for the first couple of Colts. It's stuff that's made by uh, Stephen Strawn here on YouTube. Uh, Cast Iron Cookware is his channel. It's pretty good stuff, and I use it for the first couple of coats, and then I give it a couple of coats of uh, clarified butter. But like I said, you can just use whatever uh, oil you normally cook with, vegetable oil, lard, Crisco. They all work pretty good. Uh, olive oil tends to get a bit sticky after a while. You know, if you use it a lot, it's not usually a problem, but if you get a little too much on there or if it uh, sits for a while, olive oil tends to get sticky easier than other things so kind of avoid that a bit but uh yeah you can just use whatever oil you normally use for cooking for seasoning it does say tight top huh yeah that's uh you know that's stuff that was made after wagner and griswold merged like i said it doesn't uh you know, it doesn't sell for huge prices. It's mostly pretty fairly decent stuff, but uh, it's not nearly as good as the uh, older Griswold or Wagner ware before they merged were. All the Hearthstone I've seen around here is really sketchy looking. Yeah, I haven't really, I haven't really seen very much of it. You know, so I don't. I've seen some of it offered for sale on different sites, but I never actually held, actually handled any of it. So, you know, but I know that's. Uh, You know, I know it's out there, I guess. Uh, I've been collecting all the oil lamp wall brackets of C9 gun smoke. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Hearthstone General Housewares reminds me of the Hilton aluminum ware. It has that 80s and 90s look. Yeah, I'm not sure how long they made the uh, the Hearthstone stuff. I, they started in the early 70s, maybe up into the 80s. I try to watch Gunsmoke every day after all the feeling, feeding your cows for the show. I haven't seen Gunsmoke in quite a while. Yeah, it's still, it's still on TV around here. I just haven't got around to getting around to watching it, I guess. It's usually on usually on when I'm not around, so I'm uh, trying to collect all of the wildlife set pieces lodges made. They made quite a few of them. You know, I'm uh I got no idea really how many they've actually made. You know, but I've seen I've seen ducks, I've seen bass, uh there's a deer floating around I know of. You know, a lot of different variations of fish and birds and things. So a lot of people do really collect the uh, the uh, Lodge wildlife series and some of the other things. You know, the Rosie the Riveter uh, skillet they did last year or the year before. Yeah, you know, that was pretty popular. A lot of people got those. And, uh, you know, you can usually get them from, for a fairly decent price. Uh, end cap on flu pipe has a screen on it that's turning black. Should the screen be removed and replaced with something else? You mean like on your chimney? You know, because uh, some states require that you have to have a spark arrestor on a chimney. And usually you can just clean them. I mean, it'll eventually it'll plug up with, uh, with creosote and soot. So usually you can just clean them off, you know, but if the uh, screen is starting to rust away and rot off, you'll definitely have to replace it with something. You know, you'll have to, uh, you'll have to check with your, you know, what your local codes are or your state laws are in your area. Most places don't, but some places do. You know, like out in California and out west, especially, a lot of them require that you have a spark arrestor on your chimney if you're going to burn wood or something like that, because they're pre pretty prone to fire out west these days, especially. So, uh, 
you know, yeah, I check around, but you should be able to clean it. You know, if it's just turning black, it's probably just soot and creosote. Uh, you're missing three, you think. Yeah, you know, like I say, I don't, you know, I don't know what the complete series would be. So I can't really, can't really give you much help on it. But they are pretty neat. I mean, a lot of them are, you know, really nicely, nicely done. Uh, you have the Elk Wildlife series. Had to pay, pay a pretty penny for that one. It's pretty rare. I suppose some of them are a lot more scarce. And again, you're going to run into demand. Yeah, you know, I mean, the more popular ones are going to cost you more. You know, the less popular or more common ones will be cheaper. I uh, think, think you're missing the bass, the elk, and the bear. You know, I think I saw a uh, a bass lodge skillet on the uh, Goodwill site. I don't know if that's the one you're missing, but uh, I'm pretty sure there's a bass a bass uh, lodge skillet on Goodwill right now. It looks like somebody kind of wire brushed it a little bit or something. Somebody's kind of stripped it a bit, but it could definitely be cleaned up right and reseasoned. Uh, picked up a duck skillet the other day and passed on about four different pans with other animals. So yeah, uh, you know, look at shopgoodwill.com quick and uh, you see if that's one you need. I mean, that might be something worthwhile. Again, I can't, you know, I don't really know what they go for, but I don't think the price had been run up too high yet. So it would be something worth looking into yeah i don't have any of the uh of the lodge you know the lodge wildlife series or the other ones i uh, saw that short video of my drive down the road should get some tire chains yeah it was four-wheel drive and like i said the problem was we got wet slushy stuff the night before and then a foot of snow on top of it the next evening and uh they didn't do a real good job of plowing it to begin with well they didn't plow that dead end road at all so there was basically four inches of not quite snow not quite slush underneath of it then that heavy wet snow on top so once you break through the you know eight ten inches of snow on top you're down to slop and there's not really a lot you can do about it i got tire chains on my tractor but uh I made it up all right. There have been quite a few times because I live on a dead end road or on a long driveway off the end of a dead end road off a county highway. And there's been quite a few times I've had to walk the whole way in off the uh, county road. It's about a mile long dead end road because it starts off, it's a left hand turn, starts off going up a hill. And when the county plows, they'll end up plowing a big ridge of snow across the end of the dead end road. And even if you got enough speed and momentum to break through that, it pretty much slows you down so you don't have enough speed to get up the hill. And there's different tricks you can use if you get off, if you can get off to the side enough, so you got a couple of wheels off on the shoulder. A lot of times you can burn your way through the snow and get down to a gravel, get a little traction like that. But yeah, it's, it can be quite the adventure trying to get in and in and out of here in the winter time uh, you're gonna try and find uh, uh, the deer in the retriever wildlife series from the first edition are really rare huh Well, that's good to know if I ever come across any of them. Uh, do you know of any any uh, anywhere where you can find out what's in each of the series? Uh, Honey Badger, is there a, you know, is it, does somebody have a book out there or a catalog or a website that you know shows a listing of the different uh, of the different lodge series?
Oh, you're trying to find a good chicken frying skillet when I can get one and get the chance. Any suggestions? Uh, you know, not really. You know, find the best one you can find, you know. Uh, uh, Wagner ware are fairly common. You can see, you can find quite a few of them, like, uh, you know, like this one here that I showed you earlier. You know, the marked Wagner ware aren't really all that scarce. Even more common is the unmarked Wagner wares, where they'll just, uh, you know, just say 10 and a half inch chicken fryer down here, and it doesn't have the Wagner Ware logo. And those you can usually find, you know, not terribly hard to find. And they're uh, a bit less expensive than the Wagner Ware, which is a lot cheaper than uh, Griswold, you know, but they're real nice. I mean, you can see that's got a beautiful interior on it. It's nice and smooth on the outside. Uh, Lodge and BSR, you know, I mean, everybody made chicken fryers. So you can find Lodge and BSR ones very reasonable because, you know, usually the unmarked stuff like that is a good bit cheaper. So it's just, uh, you know, if you find a chicken fryer that looks like a good pan and it's at a good price, go ahead and buy it. You know, I mean, you don't have to have any particular brand name or anything like that. And if you come across a, you know, favorite, you know, favorite wear chicken fryer, dirt cheap, you are got yourself a real nice deal. Uh, what's my favorite pan manufacturer to use or at least reach for more often than others? I got a lot of Wagner wear. Yeah, I mean, I do have some Griswold stuff, but it seems like I find find a lot more Wagner wear around here than, uh, than Griswold. So I tend to use my Wagner wear stuff. You know, the really old Wagner wear is real fun. It's real nice. I mean, real thin, real light, you know, the arc straight logos and straight logo ones, but those are starting to get, you know, more expensive now. I mean, the more people know about cast iron, the more they learn that Oh, hey, you know, that's a 125 year old pan. I think I'm going to grab that. So the prices, uh, the prices do kind of go up on them. But I, you know, I would guess I kind of lean a little bit more towards the Wagner Ware and like especially the uh, nickel plated Wagner Ware because I just like the look of it. I mean, you know, but a real hard favorite I don't really have. You know, I mean, just I try to rotate through the uh different pans i have so just to keep them keep them in use and keep them in shape uh, you had to call lodge and dig it up and email it to me have it all written down yeah yeah i mean that would that'd be definitely helpful i'll share that around and uh you know the best i can like I said, I don't have any examples of it to match it up with, but it'd be nice to know what, you know, at least have some idea of what, uh, you know, what different series there were. There's chicken fryers and there's deep skillets. Yeah, that's true. I mean, usually chicken fryer lids don't fit right on a deep skillet and vice versa. So if you get a chicken fryer or a deep skillet, you know, what looks like a chicken fryer, uh, without a lid it can be kind of tough to find a lid for them that fits really right uh, the first series is considered the sportsman series and new wildlife started with the buffalo nickel skillet and then what's out now what and then is what is out there now okay yeah I'll, you know look at your list and see what we got you know, like I said, you know, I mean, I don't really know a whole lot about them, but uh, yeah, a lot of people are interested in them because they're pretty cool. But yeah, like I said, I'm, you know, yeah, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, Oh, and Merry Christmas to Carlene. Nice to see you. Uh, 
Billy looked it up there. There, yeah, there is a bass on the uh, a bass skillet on the uh, Goodwill website. So go have a look at that if that's the one you're looking for. But anyhow, I've been at this for almost an hour or so. So I'm going to wrap it up here pretty soon. Uh, I don't see any reason why I won't be doing a show Tuesday. I'm off Tuesday, and by then the weather should actually be warm enough. It's supposed to start getting back up around 20s by uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, so hopefully there won't be any major catastrophes between now and then. And, uh, and, and, uh, you know, the one drawback of the power going out, I mean, my wood stove keeps on burning and stays plenty warm in here. The one drawback though, is there are a couple of things on eBay that I was looking at and was going to bid on, but I didn't have any electricity and couldn't really justify wasting my cell phone time on it. So there was no idea when I was going to have electricity back. So I didn't want to run down my phone bidding on things so i didn't get it but uh oh well there's other things out there uh you're only missing the retriever the original deer and the mallard fish fryer yeah i saw one of, saw one of those mallard fish fryers well it must be a month month and a half ago on uh goodwill that went for a pretty good price i think it was around 500 for that but anyway merry christmas to y'all thank you much for from, let me double check who that was. I think that was Corey. Yep. And thank you very much for the super chat, Corey. And uh, I'll see you guys next Tuesday. Hope you all have a nice Christmas. And we'll see you then. Bye.